Hey, this is Tom Nash, and if there's one guy who can do an interview from a third row of an SUV while it's actually driving on the highway on CNBC, on live television, and absolutely knock it out of the park, it's the one and only Tom Lee. Check it out. I think one of the reasons these dips have been shallow is that measures of investor leverage, whether it's margin debt, uh, which is still below July 2023 levels, or cash on the sidelines, which hit a record 6.1 trillion last week, or this past week, uh, shows you that investors are still uncomfortably underinvested, and therefore these dips are opportunities to add. I've been traveling in Latin America for the past week, meeting with a lot of pension funds, and we're getting the sense that these investors are waiting for a dip. So as soon as you get some sort of wobble like today, I, I think these are quickly met by buying. We're not in. We're not really as exhausted in terms of positioning or even sentiment as we were in October 2021. So Tom Lee just went on CNBC and he was asked a few important questions. Now, I do grant him the utmost respect for taking the interview inside of a moving vehicle in the third row. And the only reason I know that he was in the third row is because he literally posted the picture on social media because he's a G, he doesn't care. Now, he was basically asked if this recent sell-off that we've seen is the beginning of a market pullback or is there way more gas in the tank? Basically, the ultimate question he gets asked well, two or three times an hour. And he basically said the same thing he says every fucking time, which is, look, guys, there's too much money on the sideline. There's way too much money on the sideline because everybody were bearish in 2023, didn't think that they can make money in this market, myself included, but because IDCA, I didn't have the bad fate of those folks. Those folks went to cash. They stayed outside on the sideline, and now there's $6 trillion of cash dying to get in this market, but thinking that this is just too expensive. And every time there's gonna be a little dip in the market, a little pullback, these guys are gonna fill it up right away and they're gonna prop up the market for a long time because it's gonna take a hell of a lot of time to burn through $6 trillion of sideline money with lots of FOMO, which means the market can't physically crash until this money is exhausted. All of these investors who are sitting on the sideline waiting to get in. On top of it, you have the Federal Reserve literally coming into this bonfire party we're having right now with a canister of lighter fluid about to pour on it in June, probably July, and absolutely send this thing to the sky. I mean, how is this thing crashing with all of this, with $6 trillion on the sideline, with the Fed literally about to lower rates and send everybody into the stratosphere? How? And I get where he's coming from. It actually makes a lot of sense. But here's my counter argument to what Tom Lee is saying, although I agree with his overall conclusion. I think that he's probably right. I think we're probably going to have a great year. However, I'm not going to be sitting here and telling you that you should go all out, FOMO into this market, and absolutely ignore the potential of a cataclysmic negative event, which is maybe a low probability event by high consequences for sure. Essentially, what I'm saying, look, guys, there's probably 90% chances that this dude is right. I mean, he's been right so many times before. When everybody were bearish on the market at 3,500 S&P 500, this dude said, hey, we're going to 5,000 in 2023. And he was very, very close. In fact, I think he hit it right in the mark. Probably one of the only ones. In fact, I even thought that 2023 is going to be bearish. The only reason I didn't lose money in 2023 is because I basically just DCA at all times like a blind robot. Now, if I hadn't and I pulled out, oh my goodness. Now, look, at the end of the day, you have to take into account the 10% chance that he might be wrong because it's the future, except Doc Brown and that 1.21 gigawatts DeLorean. I mean, we don't know what happens in the future. So at the end of the video, once I'm finishing recapping what he said, because I ain't done yet with Tom Lee, I'm going to tell you how I'm prepping for that little 10% that things might go south. Now, he was also asked a very interesting question, which I think you should listen to. And that question had to do with small caps, why he thinks small caps are going to outperform the big caps, the NVIDIAs, the Microsofts, the Googles, the Meta. Check it out. We're emerging from a, a pretty terrible inflation cycle that was you know, crushing for smaller companies, especially their ability to uh, raise prices relative to larger companies. And it's coming at a time when the Fed is about to make a pretty abrupt move to being supportive of the business cycle instead of fighting inflation. And on a valuation side, small caps are trading at 44% of the price to book of large caps. That's exactly the, where we were in 1999, and that was the launch point for 12 years of outperformance. So I think when investors start to 
allocate the stocks and the Fed starts to be visibly cutting. You know, I think the Fed is not clear when they start, but when they start, I think it's going to be a big tailwind for small caps. Uh, it's the starting point. You know, the S&P large cap is roughly 15 times X the mag seven. The Russell 2000, if you look at the profitable companies there, have multiples more like 12 times. And the non-profitable small caps in the Russell actually have leverage either to economic growth or to risk premium declines. Mm -hmm. So you have like sort of the double recipe within the small cap index of quality companies having multiple expansion, but also sort of risk appetite growing and allows, you know, whether it's the biotechs or some of the regional banks, which will have future growth, but actually don't really earn money right now. So what he's saying here is very interesting. Now, look, Tom Lee is a fundamentals guy, but he also understands trends. He also understands micro psychology. He understands the way the market moves. He understands short term, medium term, long term. The guy is a G. Now, what he's saying here is very, very simple. Look, 2022 absolutely smashed, crushed, annihilated small caps. As you would expect, when the market pulls back, stocks with high beta, the stocks that are in the high growth category, the small caps, they will be more violently hit. It's just a thing. The Nasdaq overreacts in both directions for good reason. The same thing with small caps. Now, what he's also saying, look, if you consider the fact that small caps got hit so hard in 2022 and they have not yet came back, not even close. And if you consider the fact that they're high beta stocks, which means that the market goes absolutely ballistic, these guys are going to 2x and 3x the market. And they're still lagging behind the big caps where all the big profits happen. And I have to agree, especially given the fact that interest rates impact the companies that have no money more than the companies that are sitting on piles of cash. If I'm borrowing, if I need capital, interest rates play a huge role, not only in my day-to-day -day operations, in the way my company is evaluated, in my cost of capital, in my DCF, in my valuations, in every single aspect, access of money, cost of money, all of these things. For a company that doesn't generate positive cash flow for the small caps, that's a massive, massive issue. And once the Fed policy changes and it goes from restrictive to accommodating in June or July, probably July, these companies are going to have another boost. So when you kind of consider all these things together, he actually makes a very compelling point. Does that mean you have to go 100% all in on small caps? No, that's not what he's saying. That's definitely not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that you should be on the lookout on great companies of undervalued companies. Think about it this way. Companies that have been doing better and better every quarter, but the stock price has not been in the same level. In fact, the ideal situation is the companies that have better fundamentals every quarter, but worse stock every quarter. I think when he says that this is just the beginning of this bull cycle, I think it's 100% right. I think that if you look at the fundamentals of the big companies, if you look at Nvidia, Microsoft, Google, Meta, all the leaders in the market right now, even Tesla, Tesla has been taking a beating 35% down just recently with great fundamentals. The fundamentals are there. The profits are there. The multiples are getting cheaper. So all these companies that are absolutely killing it right now, fundamentally, business-wise, cash flow-wise, it's not the same story as the dot-com bubble because it's not about hype. It's not about, oh, it's the future, bro. These companies are making a bank. The business is great. The business is booming. And we're in the beginning of the AI revolution, AI economy, whatever you want to call it. However, having said that, you got to acknowledge the fact that things were great a day before every single market crash, a day before every single correction, a day before the dot-com, a day before the subprime crash and whatnot. And even though it's easy to kind of overestimate the upside in this market, I totally understand. It's human nature, right? We hate to look at the risks. We love the upside. I get it. But look, things might happen not the way we expect. And you got to prepare. And here's a few things I think you should be doing to prepare. For example, if you are up big in a certain position, maybe take out your original cost base. Maybe take out a third so that you still have 70% of your investment in the game, but at least now you're playing with house money. Maybe put a stop loss. Things like that. Kind of think about risk, how you want to manage it. And the other thing is mitigate your portfolio. Allocate a portion of your portfolio to something that's called the Cockroach Portfolio. We talked about it on our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom Nash in the Academy where we teach these sort of things. Maybe even not invest in bad companies. Maybe even don't FOMO into businesses you don't understand. Maybe even dollar cost average and don't pile in even though everybody's doing it. Maybe even don't buy a stock because you think you're going to resell it in three months and make a killing. Maybe. All I'm saying, there's ways to mitigate risk. There's not only one way of doing it. If you want to join the academy, learn how to do it. Also, 
you are more than welcome to join our Discord at discord.gg slash Tom Nash. It's free to join. We would love to see you there. We're almost at 8,000 members. Come join us. Come say hello. And if you made it all the way to this part of the video, which means you lasted all the way through, number one, you're a G. And number two, I want to give you something for that. And I really do appreciate it. Now, I'm not going to put it in the description, not in the pinned comment. It's only going to be here on screen. Last 50. That code is going to give you 50% off stock MVP for an annual license. And once you hit that code and you get stock of MP, your price, unlike any of the others, will never, ever go up. You're always going to pay half price forever, ever. And that's kind of a token for me to you for lasting this long in the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.